Thanksgiving service. We are so glad you're here and we're excited about all the fellowship that's already going on and uh, we are just thankful that Pastor is here with us today. Uh, right now be praying that the Lord fills him with the Holy Spirit, that he has the breath and energy to share the message. But uh, we are going to continue on with uh, songs of praise. There are Spanish words in the back. William can get you Spanish words if you need it. So just raise your hand if you need a Spanish translation. All right, then 562. 563, count your blessings. Count your blessings. 563.
thank you so much for your singing. Chris is going to give us a special number. Oh, kids are coming first. Okay.
Matthew 5, 1 through 12. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye then when men shall revile you and persecute you, shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Thank you very much. Without further ado, Pastor Clark Allen. Thank you. <laughs> what a blessing it is for me to be here this morning. Amen. <clears throat> I haven't been behind this pulpit since the 31st of October. <clears throat> and so it's been a little while. I've, uh, I've gone through quite a bit, as you might tell. I don't have my total uh, vocal capacity as yet, so I'm not going to strain myself. And so you won't hear any screaming. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> but by God's grace, I, uh, I've been preparing this message for three weeks. It's one of the longest messages I've been, been preparing. First of all, I have a lot to be thankful for. I'm alive. Amen. I, uh, I don't know if all of you know the scope of everything I've gone through, but uh, it all started in, I think it was February, where I had atrial fibrillation. They thought I was going to have to have a pacemaker defibrillator placed in me. And after a while, they did a catheterization on me. They found out that one of my bypasses, one of my five bypasses, had been stopped up. They could not unstop it. And so they, they decided to clean it out chemical-wise with strong blood thinners, like a rude rod rooter? Rotor rooter. rooter type of a thing that helped out but after a while uh, I got into the hospital again and they said we're going to have to do a procedure on you that we don't do on everyone it was stopping my heart totally and starting it up several seconds later at the first I asked the doctor uh, what's the percentage of this that it works? He said, well, the majority come out. When he said majority came out, that means there's a minority that doesn't come out. <clears throat> and so I laid there in my bed at 11 o'clock at night, and I said, Lord, I'm in your hands. And I literally just gave myself over to the Lord. I slept that night like I hadn't slept in a long time. And the next day, they did the procedure on me. It was a three-hour procedure with recovery. And when I opened my eyes, my, my dear wife was in front of me. And that made it all worth it. Uh, I got home. And then a couple of weeks, or, or uh, several weeks after that, uh, <clears throat> it was my wife's birthday in uh, October. All of this has transpired through several months. And so we went, we went to a, a concert, Christian concert. And after the concert that night, I told my wife I wasn't feeling well. And so she took me to the emergency room. And instead of atrial fibrillation, my heart was going down. My 
uh, beats per minute got down to 40, 40 beats per minute. And the doctor said that was very dangerous because if it got any lower than that, my heart would stop. They found out that my lungs were filled with water and liquid. And so they started giving me diuretics, strong diuretics, to eliminate the water. And that did give me some a relief. But after three days in the hospital, I got a fever. I didn't even know I had the fever until the nurse came in and checked my vitals. She said, I need to call the doctor. So the doctor came in and they checked me out and they said, you're positive. COVID positive? I had the two vaccines. Well, I found out, I can't prove this, but they put me on a floor with nothing but COVID patients. And so I probably, I'm not saying yes or no, I mentioned this to the doctor, and he said it couldn't be. And he said that uh, it's, it's, not the doc, it's not the hospital's fault. I said, well, I didn't have it when I came in here. And now I have it. <clears throat> and so uh, they started giving me these, <clears throat> these special infusions that you've heard about. I got five of them. Normally people get two or three. They gave me five, one a day for one hour each day. I started coming, coming out of that, and they said that was fine to see my primary doctor the following week. And I did. I went to the primary doctor. She checked me out. She says, you're fine. Just do everything in moderation and keep uh, things in low key. And so I did that. I came back to church and started preaching again. And so, but things weren't getting better. I went into the hospital again. And this time, uh, again, with uh, water in my lungs, and uh, they said I had pneumonia. Now, I've never had pneumonia in my life, and so they started treating me with pneumonia, for pneumonia. And so this is going on. This is the sixth time I'm in the hospital. It's been a very rough year. And they said, one of the Cuban nurses that came in that became very friendly with me, in fact, one of them, I was able to lead to the Lord. Amen. I led one of the Cuban nurses to the Lord. And I witnessed to all the doctors and all of the other nurses. Let them know that my God, my God is watching over me. And they said, well, definitely he is, because other people that come in with your condition." We have to put them on a respirator. We have not had to put you on a respirator. And so, no respirator. I got out of the hospital. The first time, they said, go back, do things in moderation again. But they did not give me oxygen. They did not give me any medication to follow up. So what happens? During that week, we were preparing for the fall festival and at the fall festival I, the day after I preached in the morning and in the evening and I spoke to the deacons present that evening that I'm not feeling well that I had to back off a little bit that evening I went home my wife took me to the emergency ward again this time <clears throat> it was more great and uh they started really working with me with the pneumonia, <coughs> which I had the previous week, and, uh, but it was not in high gear. This time, they sent me home with the oxygen. I've gone to my pulmonologist this last week. He said my lungs are clear, Amen. meaning I don't have any pneumonia. Amen. So praise God for that. So now the test is getting my lungs strengthened again. Amen. I was showing this to Lou. I have a therapy for my lungs. 
<laughs> I blow up balloons. I blow up balloons about five or six times a day as much as I can, getting all of my breath. And this is really helping me out. And I am getting my strength back. And so praise the Lord, even this morning, coming to church, with the oxygen, of course, on two liters, which is not a very high level, two liters, my oxygen level was 99. Thank you. Man. For the first time in many months. And so I praise God for that. So God is still in the saving and healing business. Amen. Amen. I believe in a God of provision. I believe in the power of prayer. And I want to thank everyone that has prayed for me and is praying for me. I want to fulfill God's total purpose Amen. in my life. To preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And with that in mind, <clears throat> I'd uh, like you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. And I want to congratulate all of the widows also. Uh, the Bible says much about widows. How that the church should care for the widows, and watch over their well-being. You know, back in the time when the New Testament was written, there was no Social Security. You know where the Social Security came from? The church. The church took care of them. All right? Would you want to say something? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I see a... Con eso en mente, vamos entonces, oh, ¿se está viendo? Bien, mm -hmm. ok. Con eso en mente vamos eh, a dirigirnos a Mateo eh, 5 uh, y eh, yo siempre he apoyado a las viudas uh, en la iglesia. Esa es la manera en que uh, se hacía anteriormente cuando no teníamos disponible lo que es el seguro social. La Biblia habla de que debemos apoyarla y era la iglesia la que apoyaban a las viudas y además estaban pendientes a su bienestar. In chapter 5 of Matthew, which we're going to read and look at these next moments, Jesus had been baptized at the end of chapter 3. And then he went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights to be tempted by Satan. After his temptation, he chose his apostles. Okay. Um, Perdóname, de que... estoy fuera de, de práctica. <laughs> We're good. Entonces, mire, Jesús <clears throat> comienza su ministerio público y uh, después del capítulo 3 de Mateo, él que ya ha sido bautizado en ese momento, uh, es... Él se dirige hacia el desierto para hacer, por, estar por 40 días y 40 noches siendo tentado por el diablo. After his temptation, he chooses his disciples. Después de ser tentado, él escoge a sus discípulos. You can find this in chapter 4, verses 17 through 22, which we will not read. Lo puede encontrar usted en el capítulo 4 del versículo 17 al 22 que hoy día no estaremos leyendo. After that, he begins preaching and teaching and begins to pronounce things that no one had ever said. Después de esto, él comienza a predicar y a enseñar cosas que nadie antes había escuchado. And so he leads them to a mountain. A mount where he there was a shade, and there were trees, and birds, and flowers, a very beautiful place. Entonces, eh, él los lleva hasta una montaña donde eh, se encuentra una buena eh, sombra, árboles, eh, eh, uh, pájaros, 
y un sitio muy bonito. There he begins what we call today the Beatitudes. Ahí él comienza dando las bienaventuranzas. If you look for the word Beatitudes, it means pronouncements of blessings from God. Si usted busca lo que significa bienaventuranzas, eh, va a encontrar que es un pronunciamiento de las bendiciones de Dios. Yet the word blessed or beatitudes has several meanings I found in the scriptures. Eh, sin embargo, la, eh, la palabra bienaventuranza y, ben, y bendecido, eh, eh, bienaventurado, tienen diferentes eh, ocasiones en que se menciona en la Biblia. One of them means happy. Uno de ellos, el significado es felicidad. Blessed, when you're blessed, you're happy. Cuando estás bendecido, estás feliz. Another mention of blessing is uh, highly favored or greatly favored. Uh, otra mención de, de, de la bienaventuranza es, puede decir, ¿verdad? Enormemente o uh, altamente favorecido o favorecida. Now, the, the pronouncements of blessings that Jesus is going to say are these things that are despised by the lost world. Y los pronunciamientos de estas bendiciones que Dios va a dar, de estas bienaventuranzas, es sin tomar en cuenta lo que el mundo piensa. The world does not consider blessed or highly favored the things that Jesus said. El mundo no, y no piensa que lo que el Señor dice que es enormemente favorecido es precisamente lo que ellos piensan. Look at verse 3, for example. Fíjense en el versículo 3, por ejemplo. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, que son, bendecido es aquel uh, pobres en espíritu. Blessed the, are the poor in spirit. Think of that. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What does that mean? Dice, bienaventurados los pobres en, es, en espíritu. ¿Eso qué significa? Now, if we said that blessed had other meanings, it means happy are the poor in spirit or greatly favored are the poor in spirit to God. Entonces, dijimos que hay otras definiciones. Um, usted diría, feliz son aquellos pobres en espíritu, o bendecidos son aquellos pobres en espíritu, o quizás uh, altamente favorecidos son los pobres en espíritu. In other words, Jesus was saying, blessed are those that are humble. En otras palabras, uh, lo que el Señor estaba diciendo era aquellos que son humildes, son bendecidos. Humility is contrary to pride. Humildad es lo contrario a lo que es orgullo. Humility, I, I was thinking of this and meditating on it, and God brought this to my mind. Humility is when you recognize that in yourself you can do nothing without God. Amen. Humildad, humildad es, y estuve pensando, meditando en esto, es cuando usted reconoce que por sí mismo usted no es nada y no puede hacer nada sin Dios. But what does man say? Man wants to be in control. Pero ¿qué dice el hombre? El humano quiere estar en control. Man wants the recognition. I did it. El hombre quiere el reconocimiento. Yo fui quien lo hice. Now look at verse 4. The second thing that Jesus pronounces as a blessing from God. Verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn when they shall be, for they shall be comforted. Fíjense en el versículo 4. Bendecido o bienaventurado aquellos que lamentan. Uh, Now, Let's look at it with the other words that, that are equivalent to blessed. Happy are they that mourn. Entonces, vamos a ver otras palabras que son equivalentes. Feliz es aquel que llora. Greatly favored are they that mourn. Enormemente favorecido <clears throat> aquel que llora. Now, the, the word mourn here 
in the scripture means that are repented, that are penitent, or that are uh, uh, penitent of their own uh, deeds. Entonces aquí cuando hablan del de lamento o de que lloran, están diciendo que se han arrepentido, que están en penitencia, que están eh, afligidos por lo hecho. Contrary to what the world says. Contrario a lo que el mundo dice. The world says, seek your own happiness. El mundo te dice, busca tu propia felicidad. No matter the cost or what it takes. No importa If you cosa. like it, do it. No importa el costo, no importa lo que, lo que tenga que hacer. Si le gusta, hágalo. That's not blessed. That lifts up man, but it does not lift up God. Eso no es bendecido. Eso lo que hace es que ensalza al hombre y no a Dios. Look at verse 5. Look at the third thing that Jesus says that is highly favored. He says... Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Fíjense en el versículo 5. El versículo 5 dice, Bienaventurados los mansos, porque ellos recibirán la tierra de por heredad. Now to the world, to be meek is to be a doormat. Para el mundo, el ser una persona mansa es ser una alfombra. To let people step on you. And do whatever they want. <coughs> But to God, to be meek means to be gentle, to be quiet, to remain calm even when you're provoked. Pero para Dios, el ser manso es ser amable, callado, permanecer calmado aún cuando sea no provocado. Wasn't Jesus meek? No fue Jesús manso. When they hit him and spat on him, what did he do? He did not say anything in against them. Cuando le pegaron, cuando lo bofetearon, él nunca dijo nada en contra de ellos. Could you do that? Usted puede hacer eso. If someone spat on you, would you just stand still? Si alguien le pega una cachetada, usted se podría quedar quieto. Someone came up to you and just slapped you in the face. Would you just stand there? Alguien que le venga así a dar, usted se quedaría ahí quieto. But Jesus says, highly favored are the meek. Pero Jesús dijo, altamente apavorados son aquellos que son mansos. Those that can remain calm even when provoked. Aquellos to be que, submissive. Uh -huh, aquellos que permanecen calmados aun cuando sean provocados, ser sumisos. To be meek is similar to be human, uh, humble. <coughs> El ser mansos es muy similar a la humildad. To not seek acclaim from others or to lift yourself up. No buscar el aplauso de otros o elevarse a sí mismo. <coughs> you know, uh, a lot of people have done some good things. But if you say, hey, look what I've done, that's not being meek, right? Hay mucha gente que han hecho muchas cosas, pero si usted hace, oh, mira lo que yo he hecho, eso no es ser manso. Don't acclaim yourself. Let words come from others, not from yourself. No busque el aplauso. Dejen que otros hablen acerca de lo que usted ha hecho. Look at the next thing that Jesus says is blessed. Verse 6. Piensa en la próxima cosa que dice el Señor Jesucristo en el versículo 6, que es ser bendecido. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. El versículo 6 dice, bienaventurados los que tienen hambre y sed de justicia, porque ellos serán saciados. Happy, in other words, are they that hunger and thirst. After righteousness. Feliz es aquel que tiene hambre y sed de justicia. In other words, those that hunger for the right to be done in the world, not the wrong to be done. Aquellos, en otras palabras, aquellos que eh, tienen hambre de que se haga lo correcto eh, y no lo erróneo. In this world today, the philosophy is 
Whatever you have to do to get it, you do it. En estos días, la filosofía que eh, se usa es lo que tenga que hacer para poder obtener lo que quiere. Even if it takes, takes stepping on other people. Aún si eh, toma eh, tropezar o entrar para otras personas. The world seeks acclaim. They seek power. They seek recognition. El mundo busca el aplauso, el poder, el reconocimiento. But God blesses and fills and satisfies those that seek righteousness and holiness. Pero Dios bendice y llena, o sea que satisface a aquellos que buscan justicia y santidad. We don't find a lot of people like that in the world today. No se encuentran muchas personas de esa manera en el mundo en el día de hoy. Look at verse 7. The next thing that Jesus acclaims, which is highly favored. Verse 7. Fíjense en el versículo 7, lo próximo que dice Jesús, de que es altamente reconocido. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Um, bendecidos los merico, bien, bien, bienaventurados los merico, misericordiosos porque ellos alcanzarán misericordia in other words happy are those that are merciful and have mercy on other people en otras palabras uh, felices son aquellos que son misericordiosos y que también alcanzarán misericordia in other words when you see a person in real need I know there are some out there that are that are, I mean, they just, uh, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a person come and ask for me for gas in a parking lot. And three days later, he asked for gas again. I said, wow, your car has a problem with this parking lot, doesn't it? Uh, sí, hay personas que uno sí puede observar que tiene necesidad, pero hay otras, mire, uh, personalmente en una gasolinera, una, una persona se acercó a mí pidiéndome dinero para gasolina y tres días después allí estaba otra vez y le dije, ¿sabe qué? Es muy posible que tenga algún problema con el carro y este estacionamiento. And, and once I told him that, man, he took off, he took off to go somewhere else. Sí, una vez que le dije, sí, siguió su camino. He could have won the Oscar. <laughs> I mean, he was a good actor. Muy buen actor. But he, could, he got me the first time, but he didn't get me the second time. La primera vez sí, pero la segunda vez no. But you know, there are some people out there that really, really have a need. Pero sí, hay personas allá afuera que sí están en una necesidad real. I saw a lady in Dunkin' Donuts. You know I'm famous for Dunkin' Donuts. Vi una señora en Dunkin' Donuts. Ustedes saben que es muy, soy muy famoso allí en Dunkin' Donuts. Although lately I haven't gone to Dunkin' Donuts. Últimamente no he podido ir a Dunkin' Donuts. In fact, they've closed a lot of Dunkin' Donuts down. De hecho, han cerrado bastante el Dunkin' Donuts. There was a lady there and she came in the store and she was arguing on her phone. She had a little baby in a little baby carriage. Um, Observé una señora que estaba entrando, estaba en el teléfono y se veía que estaba como discutiendo y tenía un niño pequeño. And she was very irate. Se encontraba muy irritada. And she was crying. Hasta llorando. And the baby was crying. Y el bebé también Because lloraba. she saw her mother crying. Mm -hmm. Y vio su mamá llorando. And uh, she walked up and, and uh, she, she wanted to get a cup of coffee and, and uh, some donuts and... And uh, she was talking on the phone, I heard it, says, and I don't even have money for the, for the formula for the baby, and you haven't given me anything. She was, I heard that on the conversation before she hung up. Durante la conversación, eh, ella estaba solicitando eh, comprar café y una dona, y de hecho, en, en, la, en la conversación que yo pude alcanzar a escuchar, no, ni siquiera tengo dinero para la fórmula para el bebé. I was, I was almost getting my coffee to walk out of the store at that time, when I heard all of this commotion. Entonces, yo estaba casi a salir, recogiendo mi café para salir del establecimiento cuando escuché esta conversación. God touched my heart. I'm, I'm not a rich person or anything like that. But I told the lady, take care of her bill and, and give her this also. Y pero, yo, eso, yo sentí que el Señor me tocó el corazón y miré y le dije a la señorita, um, Tome cuidado de esto y dele esto también además. And inside the bill, uh, I, I put it inside a track. 
y dentro de él, el, um, ¿verdad? el dinero le di un tratado. And the lady, lady, when she walks up, she says, no, it's taken care of. Cuando la señora fue a pagar, le dijo, no, ya, ya eso está cubierto. I said, and the rest, he says, it's for the formula for the baby. Y el resto es para la fórmula del bebé. She began to cry. Ella comenzó a llorar. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm just all sentimental. Estoy bien made me cry. <laughs> and all she said was, thank you. I don't know her name. I don't know anything about her. But God says, be merciful. When you see a real need, do something about it. If it's in your power, do something about it. Si usted tiene el poder de hacerlo, hágalo. We read in the New Testament, whatever you sow, sow yourself, you also reap. Nosotros eh, podemos leer en el Nuevo Testamento, cualquier cosa que sembrare, eso se la dará. If you're merciful to someone, someone down the road is going to be merciful for you. Si tú tienes misericordia con otro, alguien va a ser misericordioso contigo. You see, God keeps accounts. Dios continúa contando. Be loving to people. Continúa siendo amoroso. Smile to someone even though they don't smile back. Sonríale a alguien, aunque no sonríen de vuelta. Why can't you say a word of kindness? ¿Por qué no decir una palabra de bondad? God bless you today. Um, Dios te bendiga en el día de hoy. Or, uh, how are you doing? O cómo se encuentra. And do it with a smile on your face. Y hágalo con una sonrisa en su rostro. That might be the only smile they see that whole day. Puede ser muy bien, la única sonrisa que vean en el día. But if you're hateful, pero si tienes el odio, like even in your family unit, aún en la familia, en la unidad familiar, if you bark at your wife, si te pasas ladrando a la esposa, you think, do you think she's going to smile back? ¿Usted cree que va a sonreír? I think she's going to bite back. Yo creo que te va a morder. You see, whatever you sow, you shall also reap. Eso significa que aquello que sembrare, eso también se gará. Look at verse 8. Fíjense en el versículo 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Bienaventurados los de limpio corazón, porque ellos... Verán a Dios. Remember, blessed means happy or highly favored or the pure in heart. Recuérdense que bendecido o bienaventurado significa uh, felicidad y significa también uh, favorablemente, enormemente favorable. You say, well, pastor, there is no person that is, is a pure in heart today. We're all sinners. Bueno, pero diría usted pastor pero no hay nadie que sea puro de corazón en estos días that is true we are all sinners es cierto sí que somos todos pecadores even this whole preacher is a sinner y también este pastor también lo es pecador but you know I think it speaks here that if we walk in integrity yo creo que aquí lo que está hablando es de si caminamos en integridad and if we walk in honesty si caminamos con honestidad. And if we have nothing to hide in our life, live your life transparent. Si nothing to hide. Uh -huh. Y si uh, vivimos nuestra vida sin nada que tengamos que esconder, um, de forma transparente, nada que se pueda decir. Opposite of what the world says. Opuesto a lo que el mundo dice. The world says, Get what you can when you get it, when you get it. Si, sí, el mundo te dice, coge, puedas coger mientras puedas. Cheat on the job. Uh, haz trampa en el trabajo. Work less. Trabaja menos. If the boss is not there, do whatever you want. El jefe no está, haz lo que te venga en gana. Mm -hmm. And the world says, deception, strife. El, uh, el mundo dice, decepción, conflicto. Jealousy. Uh, envidia. Keep your pride up. Manténgase orgulloso. I was in a 
hospital recently and they took me out of the isolation room and they put me in a room with another fellow because they needed that isolation room. Uh, eh, en una visita reciente al hospital estaba en aislado, pero ya después me sacaron de allí y me pusieron con un compañero de cuarto. And his name is, uh, was very uh, strange. Uh, I'm not going to say his name, but you might know him. <laughs> El nombre era bastante extraño, pero no voy a decirlo porque puede, puede ser que lo conozca. But he was a grouch. Pero era bastante... Um, He was grouchy with the nurses. <laughs> he dropped his glasses and he dropped his cell phone and he dropped something else and, and he asked, he accused the nurses of taking it away in his tray uh, for food or whatever. He accused them. <laughs> Y se le cayeron otras cosas y acusó a las enfermeras de que se llevara en la bandeja de la comida estas cosas. And the lady that delivered the food, she came up to the room and says, there were no glasses on the tray. Y la señora que estaba repartiendo las comidas en las bandejas le dijo, no, no hay ningunos lentes. He says, oh, yes, they were. Oh, sí, allí estaban. And uh, uh, I can't find my cell phone. Y no puedo encontrar mi celular tampoco. And you must have taken it. Oh, usted lo cogió. And I mean, he was, he was very adamant. Y él estaba sumamente, enfuscado. He says, I want to, I want to talk to, to the, uh, uh, the manager of the floor. Yo quiero hablar con el supervisor del piso. And then, all of a sudden, I got a call on my phone. You know, there's a phone there in the, and, and I didn't know what button to push. And so I just pushed the button that had the speaker. I didn't know what I was doing. Entonces, de momento me llaman a mí y no sabía exactamente qué hacer, pero el botón que empuje lo puse en altavoz. And from the desk, one of the nurses, I don't know who she was, she said, uh, Mr. Allen, he says, if that man gives you any trouble, uh, you call us right away. And this was on the speaker after this man had already said what he had said. Yo no sabía quién era la, que me, la enfermera que me estaba hablando, pero dice, señor Allen, si ese señor tiene algún problema, solamente déjenos saber exactamente qué está ocurriendo. Y todo esto en altavoz, el señor escuchando. And all of a sudden, this made him more irate. Yeah, de momento se puso más irritado todavía. He says, I want to get off of this floor. Yo me quiero salir de este piso. I want the manager of the hospital. Yo quiero el, la persona que maneja este hospital. And before long, we had four or five people around him. Yeah, y antes de que todo el mundo pudiera ver, habían cuatro o cinco personas alrededor de él. I told him, I said, uh, sir, I... I did not know what was going on here. I, I pressed the wrong button, and my intention was, if you had any problems personally, that I would call them to help you. That was my intent. So, entonces le dije al señor, mire, yo no sabía qué estaba ocurriendo, y la intención que yo tenía era, es si usted tenía alguna cosa que necesitaba, uh, llamar por ayuda. Esa era la intención que yo estaba teniendo. And then he came in, and uh, he says, I am no dummy. He didn't say dummy. He said the word of the world. Yo no soy un tonto. Y no por lo que dijo tonto es la palabra verdad que dice el mundo. The other word for donkey. Sí, el, el otro para la... No. He says, I'm no dummy. Yeah. Yo no I tonto. have two master's degrees. Yo tengo dos... I was a principal of a school in Ohio for 30 years. Yo fui principal. I was a lieutenant colonel in uh, the Marines, and he was bringing out all of these titles. Yeah, he says, and whoever's <laughs> behind all of this, I want their job. And here I am. <laughs> But you know, this is the world's way. <laughs> they're, they're not looking for what God calls blessed. Ellos no están en busca de lo que Dios llama bendecido o bienaventurado. Look what it says in verse 9. Fíjense lo que dice el versículo 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. 
Bienaventurados los pacificadores, porque ellos serán llamados hijos de Dios. Now remember, blessed means happy or highly blessed or highly favored. Recuerden, ¿verdad? Eh, bendecido o bienaventurado significa feliz o altamente favorecido. When you walk in a room, does it bring calm? Cuando usted entra en una habitación, trae calma consigo. Or does it bring tenseness? O trae usted tensión. When people see you, are they tense? Cuando las personas lo ven, se ponen tensas. Are people tense when they speak to you? Las personas se sienten tensas cuando le hablan. Then you are not a peacemaker. Entonces usted no es un pacificador. That's not only in the home, but in the workplace and in the business realm, we need to be peacemakers. Eso no es solamente en un hogar, también en el trabajo, en cualquier negocio. Nosotros tenemos que ser pacificadores. Peacemakers are those that bring calm in the storms of life. Bien. Los pacificadores son aquellos que calman las tormentas que se encuentran en la vida. Their mere presence brings peace to the situation. Su presencia sola trae paz a la situación. Even in this church, I've seen several people that have passed away that have been tremendous peacemakers. Aún en esta iglesia he podido observar Personas que ya han pasado a estar con el Señor, que eran pacificadores. Penny Pincus was a peacemaker. Amen. Amen. Penny Pincus era también una pacificadora. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> Another person that was a peacemaker was Peter's mother. Amen. Whenever she came up to the church, she would always smile at me. Siempre que entraba por la puerta, siempre había una sonrisa para mí. She was such an encourager. Siempre una forma de uno sentirse bien. That's how I want to be remembered. Así yo quiero ser recordado. Why don't you want to be remembered like that? ¿Por qué ustedes no les gustaría ser recordado así? Why do you bring tenseness wherever you're at? ¿Por qué traes la tensión en donde quiera que te encuentres? When words come out of your mouth, you bring tension. Cuando salen palabras de tu boca, traes tensión. You're not blessed. No estás bendecido. No eres bienaventurado. You are not highly favored. No estás altamente favorecido. Let me tell you this. You're not happy. Le puedo decir esto en estos momentos. No es feliz. The world is concerned with their own needs El mundo and their wants. Está muy, muy preocupado por sus necesidades y lo que quieren. They're not concerned for others and their needs. No están preocupados por otros ni las necesidades de otros. You know another person that is still living that, that is a peacemaker? Janet Venable. Man. Saben, una persona que es una pacificadora que aún vive, Janet Venable. She is such a, a wonderful lady. Es una mujer maravillosa. There are some people here I'm not going to mention. They are peacemakers. Y aquí también tenemos personas que sí son pacificadores. But there are some people here and I'm not going to point out. <laughs> pero hay algunos acá que no voy a apuntar, pero sí. That you don't bring peace. Que no traes paz. And you need to examine yourself. Necesitas examinarte. You need to examine yourself. Necesitas mirar. You need to ask God forgiveness. Necesitas pedirle a Dios. If you want to truly be happy. Si quieres estar feliz. In what's left of your life. En ese resto de tu vida. And the last thing that Jesus says that is blessed. Is found from 10 to 12. Y lo último que dice el Señor se encuentra del 10 al 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Bienaventurados los que padecen persecución por causa de la justicia, 
porque de ellos es el reino de los cielos. Blessed are ye when men revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Bienaventurados sois cuando por mi causa os, vir, os vituperen y os persigan y toda clase de mal contra vosotros mintiendo. We can say it in this words. Blessed are happy or highly favored are they which are persecuted for Christ's sake. Podemos decirlo de esta manera, bienaventurados o felices o altamente favorecidos son aquellos que son perseguidos por el nombre de Cristo. Those that will not deny their faith even in the face of death. Aquellos que no negaren la fe aun cuando estén enfrente de la muerte. And we see this happening right now in the world, in Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East. Y lo podemos observar esto ocurriendo en el mundo, África, Asia, eh, um, en Medio Oriente. How would you feel if people would come and cut the heads off of your grandchildren right in front of you? ¿Cómo te sentiría si enfrente de ti le cortan las cabezas de tus nietos? And you're standing there. Y estás allí, viéndolo. That has happened and perhaps is happening in Afghanistan, in Iran, in Iraq, and places like that. Eso ha ocurrido y aún más es posible que siga ocurriendo en sitios como Afganistán, Irán, Irak. But we, by God's grace, have the freedom to worship our Savior openly still. Pero nosotros, por la gracia de Dios, tenemos la libertad de alabarle de forma abierta. There's no one standing outside the door here with a machine gun. No hay nadie que esté aquí esperándonos afuera con armas de fuego. You came here with free will. Ustedes vinieron aquí con toda libertad. We sang these hymns. Some of the hymns you didn't sing with all your heart. Pudimos cantar estos himnos y hay algunos de estos himnos que ustedes no cantaron con todo su corazón. The words were beautiful, Kate. If you read the words of these hymns, hymns have a, a theology all their own sometimes. Amen. En los himnos son muy hermosos. Las palabras son muy hermosas y hay algunos himnos que tienen una teología preciosa. And young people today, they'd rather have the beat. Y los jóvenes hoy día lo que les gustaría tener es el... Rather than hear the hymn. Aparte, en vez de escuchar el himno. I like the word hymn because it speaks about him. Me gusta la palabra himno porque habla de él. I don't mind contemporary if it's good contemporary. No me no me molesta la música contemporánea si es muy si es buena. But I don't want the contemporary where it looks like a rock concert with strobe lights and and jumping around and I've witnessed personally in the past. I went to a church I didn't know this, but they were playing the guitars. And the guitar players were on stage barefooted Entonces, in front of a church. Um, pero cuando ya la música eh, es más oh, como un concierto de rock, y de hecho fui y visité una iglesia en donde eh, el guitarrista estaba descalzo eh, con, con sonando la, la, la guitarra. You say, well... Aren't we listening to the words, not looking at the people? Hey, well, what you look at also conduces to how we're going to worship, right? Entonces, eh, usted dice, bueno, las palabras son las que son, pero cuando uno observa la imagen, también eh, conducen a cosas. How would you feel if I came in this morning, you haven't seen me in three weeks, and I came in with flip-flops and a Hawaiian shirt? Well, today I wouldn't come in a Hawaiian shirt with it. With the chills, with chills and so forth, and and with blue jeans, how would you feel? ¿Cómo usted se sentiría si usted después de haber no haberme visto tres semanas, yo entrase por esa puerta con una camisa hawaiana y un par de maones uh, y unas chancletas? Would you say, hey, the pastor's cool today? Oh, el pastor se ve muy bien. <laughs> Or what would you say in your mind? Okay, I, think the, I think the pneumonia got to the pastor's mind. Yo creo que la pneumonia le llegó al cerebro. 
But we're here worshiping God freely. Pero estamos aquí alabando al Señor de forma libre. Openly. Abiertamente. But the time could come where we will have to suffer for the cause of Christ, as it says here in the eighth blessing that Jesus pronounces. Pero eh, el tiempo podría llegar en que tengamos que sufrir por la causa de Cristo, así como se explica aquí en, en el versículo que leímos. The question I ask you this, are you ready? La pregunta es, que le, le hago a todos ustedes, ¿está listo o listo? Are we ready? Estamos listos nosotros. May we thank God for the freedom of worship. The first cause why the Puritans and, and, and the pilgrims came to this nation. Thank God for the freedom of worship. Le agradecemos al Señor Jesucristo que agradezcamos eh, firmemente el que tengamos esa libertad. Eh, aquellos que primero vinieron aquí, los puritanos y los pe eh, peregrinos, en esta tierra de nosotros. I hope I've said something that has blessed you today. Yo espero que haya dicho algo que haya sido Something that's helped you. Algo que le haya ayudado. Personally. Personalmente. To get closer to him. Para acercarse más a él. May this week of Thanksgiving esta semana de acción de gracias. Be truly a blessing with you and your family. Don't forget Tuesday. Se, and praise. Por favor, que esta semana verdaderamente sea una bendición para usted y su familia. No se olviden el martes. Seven o'clock. A las siete de la noche. And we're going to have times of testimonies and praise and worship and scripture reading. It'll be a good time before Thanksgiving. Hope you can come. Vamos a tener tiempo de testimonios, de oraciones, de alabanza, de, de, de lectura bíblica para nosotros compartir. Por favor, vengan, asistan. Let's pray. Oremos. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the message of the Beatitudes, the pronouncements of blessings from the Lord. The world thinks those are weaknesses, but you say those things are highly favored and that they truly make us happy in our hearts. Father, help us to seek the things that you bless rather than the things the world follows. If there's anyone here without Christ, May this be a time of reckoning. May we look inside our hearts. Do I belong to Christ? Or do I profess with my mouth only? Lord, may everyone look inside. Father, bless in this invitation. In Jesus' name. You that are watching, on the internet, or maybe those that are here. Are you saved? If today were the last day of your life on earth, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt where you would spend eternity? If you don't, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I need you. I feel empty and void. And right now, with all my heart, I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. I'm sinful. I have dirty thoughts and dirty intents. Cleanse me with your power. Forgive me. Help me walk in your ways from this day forth. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Thank you all for being here. I feel like a duck in the water today. Uh. <coughs> I feel I feel so blessed to be able to preach, and God give me the strength to preach. Amen. I uh, I've been praying much for this. I had a lot of time to pray, and uh, we're going to have the announcements right now, and. And then you're all welcome to come and eat. There's enough for everyone. And so don't go, don't leave without having a bite with us. Amen? Come on. Okay. There is no 6 p.m. service tonight. No hay servicio esta noche a las 6. Tonight on Tuesday, November 23rd at 7 p.m. We are having our pie and pray service. There are no other services this week. El martes 23 de noviembre a las 7 de la noche tendremos nuestro servicio de pastel y ambanza. No hay otros servicios esta semana. Aleluya. We have so much to be thankful for, so don't forget to thank God for all your blessings. Jueves 25 de noviembre, feliz día de acción de gracias. Tenemos mucho que agradecer por eso. No te olvides de agradecer a Dios por todos tus bendiciones. And then on Sunday, November 28th, you will have next interpreter. Okay. our normal <laughs> schedule. El domingo 28 de noviembre tendremos nuestro horario de servicio normal. Check your bulletin for upcoming activities. Consulte su bulletin para estar al tanto de las próximas actividades. Yeah. Pray for the food. <laughs> Lord, we ask your blessings on the food that's been prepared. May we delight in it. May we delight in the fellowship. We're thankful for this church and the freedom to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.